Hi, I'm Steve Penny, and welcome to Say It Loud. Got a great subject, a message to share with you today. I'm preaching on being rapture ready. Are you ready for the rapture? Or do you even believe in it? Well, I want to convince you, according to what I believe the Bible talks about, that the rapture is very, very soon, and we should be ready for it. Let me read Matthew 24, verses 35 to 44. It says this, But of that day and the hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only knows of that day. And then Jesus goes on and says, But as the days of Noah were, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Conditions, signs of the, the, the days of Noah, you'll see them again just before the coming of the Son of Man. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, life as normal, marrying and giving in marriage, having plans and dreams, until the day that Noah entered the ark and did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Then it goes on, Then two men will be in the field, and one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill, one will be taken and the other left. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, been alert, ready, and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Life as usual, plans and dreams, doing all the normal things that a society, humanity, want to aspire to do, and uh, that will be broken into by the coming of the Lord for the saints in righteousness. Here's another scripture. Matthew 25, verse 1 to 13. Listen to this. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Very specific as to what's happening here. You can't make this an allegorical story. It is very specific as to what is being taught here. Now, five of them were wise. They're all virgins. And five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise f uh, five virgins took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept, the whole ten of them. But at, And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. I think on planet Earth right now, the prophetic sound is being heard around the nations. Get ready for the soon return of Jesus for his bride. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Get yourself ready. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, we can't do that lest there should not be enough for us and for you as well. But you go, rather, to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. So it's an opportunity. That's why the rapture is so incredibly important. It's unannounced, 
and it's a short window where the, the righteous are snatched away, those who are rapture ready. And the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore. Watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. That can't be the second coming of Jesus. This is an unannounced, and it's an immediate snatching away of the righteous for a purpose, to go to the wedding. The second coming of Jesus is different. Trumpets are blowing and uh, everything, and he's seen in the air, and he comes down, his feet on the Mount of Olives, and they split, and he, he takes up rulership of the, the planet. That's different to what's being talked about here. That's why it's so... But watch, get ready. Now, there's two requirements out of this passage of scripture we need to get the first one is they were pure virgins they were washed in the blood of the lamb we're made pure by the blood of jesus we qualify but there was a second and that was they they had to have oil in their lamps lamps with oil that's the anointing abiding of the spirit of god within a redeemed righteous person. So washed in the blood, pure virgins, lamps with oil. They're not dry, dead, half-baked, backslidden people. And so they're the two requirements that we see in Scripture to be rapture ready. Here's another Scripture I want to... I'm, I'm laying some Scripture on you because it's important that we get what the Bible says about this great event. Titus. Chapter 1, verse 11 to 15. Listen to this. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that, or that we should, deny, denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live like this. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I, I'm intrigued here. It's so clear. It says if you want to live godly in Christ Jesus, live soberly, live righteously and uh, godly in this present wicked world. And the fourth thing it says is that you will uh, be looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior. So there is a rapture-ready uh, requirement to live godly in Christ Jesus. And it goes on and says, Who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people for himself, zealous for good works. Then it says this, Speak these things, exhort, and rebuke with all authority and let no one despise you when you preach this message. I'm amazed, and i got to say this, I'm amazed at how many uh, upstart younger generation leaders of the contemporary church are, are verbally despising people that preach the rapture, about being rapture ready. They're mocking they're despising it. That's why uh, the writer here says, don't let anyone despise you when you preach these things. It's the word of truth. And so that's very important for each one of us. Now, let me dumb this down even further so we get it clearly. Uh, the gospel, the good news of Jesus, is a three-part, three-point, or three-fold message. This is dumbing it right down to what the whole thing about our Christian faith and our gospel message is all about. Here's the first one, the gospel. Three things. Number one, salvation has come. In Jesus, he came to bring righteousness for all people who believe in him and his finished work on the cross. Salvation has come, bringing righteousness for all 
who dare to believe. Number two, the gospel, the Holy Spirit has come, bringing power to live the righteous, godly, overcoming life. Salvation has come, bringing righteousness for all. The Holy Spirit has come, bringing power to live in righteousness. And the third one, part of the gospel is Jesus is coming again soon. That's the third part of the gospel message. This is the blessed hope, the Bible calls it, of the righteous who dare to believe that Christ's return for his church is near and very, very soon coming into our world. So if that's true, and there is a second coming of Jesus in two parts, the secret one to take his church into heaven for a wedding supper for seven years, and, and while on earth, the tribulation and judgments of God. And then after that period, Jesus returns with his wife to rule and reign over all people. And so that's what the near return of Jesus is all about. So let's talk about then, what is the rapture? People get off on, well, it's this word and it's that word and the original language. No, no, it's a word we have embraced in English to mean simply the snatching away, caught away. The people who are raptured are snatched out of life to go to be with Jesus. So here's some things about the rapture I want you to get. The rapture of the righteous is different to the visible return of Jesus with his bride or his wife to rule and reign on planet earth. They're two distinct events. One is secret. One is the whole world. Every eye shall see him and every knee shall bow when he comes back. The first one is us being raptured to be with him and to enjoy a wedding marriage supper. Secondly, the rapture is the secret snatching away of the righteous to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Thirdly, the rapture will plunge the world into chaos, confusion, and conflict. The moment the righteous are taken out, the righteous, not the religious, the righteous, are taken out, be with Jesus, marriage supper, the whole world on planet Earth will be literally thrown into chaos, confusion, and absolute conflict. Uh, wickedness will abound uh, because of the opportunity. That which was the, the holding back of wickedness, the Holy Spirit in His church will be taken out. And so there'll be all kinds of chaos, confusion, and wickedness manifest. Number, another thing, the rapture will introduce the seven-year tribulation period of God's judgment. And that will be on three groups of people. It'll be on the wicked. It'll be on backslidden or rebellious Israel. And it'll be on a backslidden or lukewarm church that didn't go up in the rapture. They'll go through the tribulation with all the judgments and persecution, whatever. Man, that alone that's where, why some people point the finger and say, you just preach that because you want to have a gospel that misses out on hard times. That's not hard times. That's the judgment of, of God on wickedness. That's why the righteous cannot go through that. The Bible teaches that from cover to cover. So here's now, that's the rapture in, as an event. Seven years apart, the two comings of Jesus one secret, one manifest and visible. So what are the requirements for us to be rapture ready? Well, it's simple. We've already read scriptures and talked about it. Uh, there are two things you need to be rapture ready. Don't make a whole list of them. There's two things you need. The first, you need the blood of Jesus to have washed your spirit. And you need the Spirit, you need the blood and the Spirit to live righteously. Because it's the righteous that go. Not the religious, the righteous. And you need the blood 
and the Spirit. In other words, remember this if you don't remember anything else about being rapture ready, you need a gown and a crown to be rapture ready, to be ready for the wedding. You need a gown and a crown. And so the gown is our blood-washed robe of righteousness that we receive at salvation. We're made righteous when we abide in Christ. We no longer live by the works of the flesh, our selfish indulgences. We're in Christ. We fulfill His will. We're obedient to His call and commands. And we're blood-washed and positioned in Him in righteousness. That's our gown, our robe. But our crown is the anointing oil of the Holy Spirit. It's our empowering to practice and live righteous. It's like one thing to, as some people say, well, I'm positioned in righteousness. I received it. It's mine. It's imputed to me. But the Bible also teaches if you are positioned in righteousness, you will also practice righteousness. You'll live righteously. And that, that's why the Holy Spirit has been given. He's not sent to give you little floppy, buzzy, fuzzy feelings at an altar call. He, he's sent to empower you to practice and live righteously. The righteousness in God, in Christ, seen in your life. When you get those two, your gown and your crown, and uh, then you know and live in a state of rapture readiness. That's what I want for you. It's not hard. Both of those are by faith in Christ and what He has provided for us. So to be rapture ready is to wear your gown and your crown by faith. And the funny thing is, you put on both of them. You put on your robe of righteousness daily in Christ. I am a saint, not a sinner. I'm not a person forgiven, trying my hardest to live a good life. No, I'm, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ, a brand new creation in Him. In my spirit, I'm no longer the old person. I've been washed in the blood. I've been clothed with the garments of salvation, the robe of righteousness. I can never be that old sinner again but then you have to put it on and by the anointing you put on a crown you crown with the anointing bible calls the anointing in the old testament the crown of the anointing from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet the anointing runs and it empowers you to live what you profess i'm a righteous person well now by the holy spirit i can live that and as you practice that in your life, you are rapture ready or wedding ready. You're ready for the wedding. And I love that. So here's a couple of scriptures that talk about this. And I want you to get these. First one is your robe of righteousness. Revelation 19 verse 7 and 8. Great. This is such an amazing passage of scripture. And it says this, Revelation 19, 7 and 8. says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give glory to Him. For the marriage of the Lamb has come. I think that's talking about the rapture, being rapture ready. Be glad and rejoice and give Him glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come has come, and his wife hasn't happened, but already declaring that's the wife, the bride to become the wife, because she has made herself rapture ready or wedding ready. It would be crazy if you uh, were engaged to be married to a woman and uh, you went around there on the, on the day or rang her and 
I said, how are you going? She said, I'm out in the garden. I'm just uh, trimming the bushes because they, they need a little bit of it. We're getting married in an hour. Yeah, but I'm busy with stuff. You would wonder about marrying that person. And so the bride has made herself ready. She's ready for the limo to pick her up, take her to the wedding for the rapture to happen. She's wedding ready with great anticipation. She's no longer in love with all of the things in her physical world. She's got a great engagement with the one who has redeemed her and chosen her. And it goes on and says this, And to her, the one that is wedding ready, prepared herself for the occasion. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen that she puts on is the righteous acts of the saints. You see, this robe of righteousness is not an inside thing that, well, I, I had it, righteousness imputed to me at salvation. No, she's wearing a robe of glorious, white, Incredible light, and it's called here, this robe, the fine linen, is the righteous acts of the saints. She was seen to be living righteously in an immoral, wicked world. And so the, uh, the thing about this robe of righteousness, it's amazing how the two things that we're required to wear on planet Earth are transformed in heaven. The robe of righteousness is transformed to become your wedding garment when you get to heaven. I love that. You don't need to trick yourself up like when you go to church. If you're wearing the robe of righteousness by faith and practicing righteousness by the power of the Holy Spirit, then when you get to heaven, that robe of righteousness gets you in to the wedding and it literally is transformed to become an eternal gar garment on you for eternity. I love that. I, I think it's brilliant. And so that's what happens. Those that are rapture ready, wearing the robe of righteousness. The second thing is the crown of righteousness. Second thing we need to put on and wear. And in 2 Timothy, it says this. Quite an incredible scripture. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 and 8. Listen to it. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. That's a rapture-ready person. Doesn't mean you don't have goals and dreams. The Bible says, occupy till he comes for us. Keep doing kingdom stuff. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith strong. Finally, Listen to this. There is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved and longed and looked for his appearing. The crown of the anointing is for earth. We don't need the anointing of the Holy Spirit in heaven. He came to bring the fullness of heaven so we could live heaven's fullness on earth and overcome and live righteous and show righteous acts of the saints. So the crown of the anointing becomes the crown of righteous rewards in heaven. A lot of people will say, well, I did this and I should get rewarded, I did that, or I... No, no, it's, it's the crown of the anointing that empowers you to live a godly, overcoming, righteous life. That becomes the crown of righteousness, righteous rewards when you get to heaven. It's not some trick-up job in heaven. It's simply a transformation of the two things that God requires you to wear on planet Earth. 
the gown, and the crown. You want to be rapture ready? Then focus on those two. I want a gown, robe of righteousness. By faith I am living, walking in righteousness. The crown, by faith I am empowered by the anointing of the Spirit to practice, perform righteous acts and deeds on planet earth that help many. And so here's another scripture. We've talked about all this. I'm trying to stir you up to realize this is coming soon. Well, I'm not going into timing. That's a whole different subject on the generation that see this and that and whatever. No, it's happening very soon. And the more the mockers and scoffers preach against it, the more you and I need to stand up and say, I want to be rapture ready, whether it's in 10 days or 10 years is not the issue. That's the way God wants us to live, rapture ready. As though Jesus was coming today, I want to be ready for his appearing. And when it does happen, it won't be a shock. I won't, be, I won't miss out. I won't have to go through the purifying of my life in the tribulation and persecution. No, no, I want to be ready. And so here's another scripture. Listen to this. Matthew 25, you want to be ready too. Matthew 25, 13 says this. Matthew 25, 13 says, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. All he says is watch. It's like, looking out the the window and all the traffic, you're watching for the limo to take you to the wedding because you're ready. You've got your crown and your gown on and you're ready. Now you're watching. And here's what you need to watch for when it says, watch therefore, or what are you watching for? Here's three things as I close. And I, I want to encourage you. Start to take the coming of Jesus seriously. It's so important that you're ready. I want every one of my loved ones and friends, I want us to be rejoicing at the marriage supper of the Lamb together. I'd hate for people in my world to miss out on that. Here's three things to watch for. Firstly, you need to watch and be aware of the signs of the times. Don't, don't make it a lifetime study to be able to rehearse every, every hue of darkness and wickedness. No, watch for the signs of his return, not the signs of the world going down the gurgler or down the drain. Watch for the signs that the Bible says will be manifest in that generation when he comes unexpectedly. At least know those. Secondly, then take time to watch therefore for the Spirit moving across the earth, across the nations. Get your, get your specs on. Instead of wasting time watching every piece of garbage on social media and TV, start to follow the, the moving of the Spirit around the world. It's happening everywhere. Phenomenal breakouts of God. Not, a, not just the American model of revival, which is all get together and, uh, you know, have a whirlpool of s static experiences. No, revival is breaking out in nations all over the world where godly people are living righteous, winning their friends and the lost to Jesus. They're bringing in an incredible harvest. Look for the signs of the Spirit moving. And then the third one, the first one was signs of the times. Second one, evidence of the Spirit moving. The third one that you need to watch for and look, look around for are sons of righteousness. Can I say this? Some of you have made friends of idiots. Drop kicks. Half... They're, they're, I'm not even sure they're Christians the way they live. 
Start to look for sons of righteousness, daughters of righteousness, people that live and express righteous acts of the saints. That's the evidence of the robe and the anointing. And start to look for them and find them and hang around with people that are doing righteous acts, reaching the lost, helping the poor, housing the homeless, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked. Come on, it's not all just social welfare. No, no, the Spirit alive to redeem people like that. And so look for people that are about the cause of Christ. I think the church should be laying aside a lot of other stuff in our lives to fulfill the call of Jesus, to change our generation by the will of God before He returns. They're the three things. Look, look, study the signs of the times. Know that, and you cannot, you cannot debunk a preacher that preaches on the signs of the times. There's never been in history a global environment of darkness, gross darkness and wickedness pervading every level, governments and nations now literally legislating for evil of its darkest form to be accepted as normal. And then they persecute those who don't accept it or speak against it. You cannot negate the signs of the times. You cannot if you look closely at the spirit moving across the waters of humanity in a way that's marvelous. You can't negate that. And thirdly, you cannot negate, whether they call them the remnant or whatever else, there is a wave of people saying we've got to lay aside a lot of the junk of this world so we can live righteous, join together as a righteous army to redeem the lost and bring the love of God to a broken world. You got to watch therefore. Look for it. And I tell you this, at a time when you least expect it, it's not going to be a big fanfare. You'll just look and someone you were with will be gone. At work, having a break, wherever, all of a sudden, the whole world will be thrown into an absolute frenzy. Wickedness will rise because the righteous restrainers are gone. Are you looking for it? Are you preparing yourself for such an event when you least expect it? Because right now the Holy Spirit's challenging each one of us. Are you rapture ready? Are you ready for a wedding with the precious Son of the living God. Whoa. He's coming soon. Get yourself ready. Let me pray for you. Father, today I thank you for your word. It's not in riddles. It's not hard to understand. It's very clear. And I thank you the message. Arise, wake up. The bridegroom is coming, is being preached by godly people all over the world. And I thank you that you're appearing to take your bride to be with you and become your wife is now right on our doorstep. I pray for every person, hear the voice of the Spirit, get themselves ready in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? I hope that blessed you, helped you. I really do think God is working mightily in your life and in mine, to be rapture ready. God bless you. Look forward to preaching. Seeing you again next week in Jesus' name.